Good morning. My parents are Dwight and Melvina Lading, and they will be married 70 years this week. We're very grateful. One thing I remember about growing up is that Christ was always the center of our family. And today we dedicate this song to them and to all the family units who are keep trying to keep Christ in the center of their family. God bless you all. singing of our first hymn, hymn number 905. Please note we'll rise for the singing of our last stanza.
the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and name servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to him because he has shown his mercy to us. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad, my whole being rejoices, my flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to him, because he has shown his mercy to us. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Yeah. Uh -huh.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity and the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the festival of the Holy Trinity is from Proverbs chapter 8. Does not wisdom call? Does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads she takes her stand. Besides the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portal she cries aloud. To you, O men, I call, and my cry is to the children of man. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of old. Ages ago I was set up, at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. Before he had made the earth with its fields, nor the first of the dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command. When he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was made, I was beside him like a master workman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the children of man. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Acts chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced, my flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. <coughs> Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucify. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Please rise as we join together in singing our Alleluia in verse and for our gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. Jews answered, Jesus, are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father, and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. 
The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did, the, as did the prophets. Yet you say, If anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? The prophets died. Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We join together in singing our hymn of the day, hymn number 507. peace from God our Father and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is in our worship folders from Genesis 22 as we continue now our second week as a looking at our Tree of Life series. Today of course Abraham. Abraham and Isaac. After these things God tested Abraham and said to him Abraham and he said here am I. He said take your son your only son Isaac whom you love and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood of the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. 
Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, it is appropriate on this day that we celebrate the Blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that we also get to read the story of Abraham, even as we heard about in our lessons this morning. Abraham, the one whom God promised that he was going to be the father of many nations, that all of the world was going to be blessed by the offspring, singular, of Abraham. So here we have today in our reading, Abraham called by God to do almost what we might say, the unspeakable act to sacrifice his son. His, now notice what the Lord says, only son. You know, that actually is not also true, though, because he had Ishmael. But sadly, Ishmael was not going to be the son of the promise. Isaac was. See, everything that happens in our reading today is really for Abraham's sake. Say, how so? I'll tell you. Who did Abraham love more? God or Isaac? Now that's a tough question. Because if you go to any parent and you say to them, do you have a child who is your favorite? Well, I've actually had some parents tell me, I have no favorites. I looked them in the eye and said, you're not telling the truth. It happens. We're human. That's just the way it is. Remember, by this time, Ishmael and Hagar had already been sent away. Oh, God had promised Abraham that Ishmael was going to be a mighty kingdom also. He himself was going to be the father of 12 tribes and so forth. But Ishmael was not the one whom God had promised. Ishmael was the son of Abraham and Sarah and Hagar taking matters into their own hands and not trusting in the Lord. So, again, whom did God promise the promise to Abraham? Whom did Abraham love more? God or... I know, that's the hard part. You see... God knows the heart. God knows the heart. That's why he's testing the faith of Abraham. God knows very well the heart of Abraham. He knows his love for him as God. But for Abraham's sake, he himself probably struggled with that. Nothing that God does, though, remember, is by chance or circumstance or happenstance. Scripture is going to be that which, what? Well, it leads us to salvation. It leads us to the point that we now know that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. And the only way that Jesus is going to come into the world, God's plan, not my words, but God's plan, is through Isaac, the child of promise. So Abraham, though he in his amazing faith, does not lose time. He wakes up the next morning, they take the donkey, the two men, off they go. They've got the wood, they've got the fire, they've got everything Everything needs to be done as God said. And see, the interesting part about it, of course, is God's going to tell him where to go. And location, as it is in all parts of real estate, right? Location, location, location. Sure enough, location sets the story in place for us. For we know that one day... Jerusalem is going to set upon this mount that the Lord calls Abraham and Isaac to. 
Everything is going to be just as it needs to be. That's why our text goes on then. It says, And Abraham took the wood and the burnt offering, laid it on Isaac his son, and took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went both of them together. And Isaac said to his father, Abraham, my father. And he said, Here am I, my son. He said, Behold, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they both went, uh, both of them on together. When they came to the place where, of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there, laid the wood in order, bound Isaac his son, laid him on the altar on top of the wood. God will provide. Those words of faith of Abraham to this very day are moving in the hearts of Christians. We know we are, as Christians, in that same vein as Abraham. We are the children of Abraham because of Isaac. And yet, can we say all the time, God will provide? Well, we know we don't because we've already confessed our sin. Abraham's obedience to the Lord, though, is historical. It's mind-boggling. But it is also that which God had given to him. See, to say, well, I have the faith of Abraham. Some days, maybe, yes. But remember, Abraham didn't always have that faith of Abraham. We know that because there were times in Scripture where he trusted his own doing, such as with even Ishmael and Hagar. The time that he says to Sarah, his wife, Oh, tell them you're my sister, not my wife. Oh, everything worked out as God intended it to, of course. But Abraham's obedience to the Lord, Oh, it's true. He believed that God would provide. Because God is the one that told him what to do. He doesn't question. He trusts. He shows what love of God truly is. Of course, you can't see this picture here of Isaac carrying the wood without also seeing in our own eyes the very fact of Christ bearing the cross, the wood upon his own shoulders until he cannot do it anymore. His death. His death instrument was going to be carried by himself until he could not. Isaac bore the wood. Oh sure, his father's carrying the fire and the knife, but without the wood there is no sacrifice. See, God is always going to fulfill His promises. That is what the story today tells us about here in Genesis 22. The promise to Abraham was, He was going to be the father of many nations, as I said before. And yet His offspring, singular, is going to be the blessing to the nations. Listen to this from Genesis 22. Again, just a few verses past our reading today. The Lord speaking. I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven, as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring, singular, shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. Again, I'm not giving anything away. You know what happens here in our story today. And thanks be to God for that. God is going to fulfill his promises. Abraham is the father of many nations. We are his children. How many of you sang that great song, Father Abraham, in your childhood, right? 
Father Abraham had many sons, many sons of Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Isaac was that child of promise. So much rested on and in him. And yet, here is Isaac bound and laying on the altar. His father has the knife in his hand. He is going to do what God commanded. Verse 10. Abraham reached out his hand, took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God. Seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram, caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. It's no coincidence that Jesus steps in and stops Abraham. Yeah, no, you caught that, right? The angel of the Lord is Jesus before he is incarnate in human flesh. <coughs> See, the death of Isaac would just have been the death of Isaac. So the one whose life is going to save eternity, mankind, right? Christ steps in and stops Abraham from doing what he has going, was going to do because Isaac's sacrifice would have been insufficient. Abraham's faith is a lesson, of course, for us all. We already said that. We know that. That's why we struggle in our faith. Because we know our faith goes ups and downs, has its ups and downs, hills and valleys, and challenges that we go through. If you stop and think about it, it's kind of like those cliffhangers in the movie. Could Jesus have cut it any closer? There's zero seconds almost on the clock. His hand is almost going to come down with a knife. But the Lord is in control. Abraham was not. All of this was for Abraham's sake. God knows the heart. Now I know, he says, and it's like God didn't sit there and wonder. But Abraham knew as well. Isaac knew as well faith of his father. So here we have now Jesus speaking to Abraham, proclaiming that there is nothing to be done here in this way. But the Lord provides. The ram is in the thicket. One takes the place of another. Yes, the one whose sacrifice was going to be sufficient speaks to Abraham. Jesus' work for us was sufficient. Your sin, my sins have been taken away. God's plan for Abraham is the same plan for us. Your salvation is secure in Christ as we walk in the faith that he has given to us. The Lord has provided himself for us. That's why we're going to feast soon on his body and his blood as he has given them to us. Reminding us Abraham's faith our faith 
is given to us by God himself. And it is sufficient for us to walk in him. The one promised through the child of promise. Abraham's son, Isaac, and yet Isaac's son of promise, Christ. In his name, amen. Will you join with me now on page 319 as we rise this morning as we join together on this Trinity Sunday with the profession of our Christian faith with the Athanasian Creed. We confess together, whoever desires to be saved must above all hold the Catholic faith. Whoever does not keep it whole and undefiled will without doubt perish eternally. And the Catholic faith is this, that we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the substance. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. But the Godhead of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is one, the glory equal the majesty co-eternal. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Spirit eternal. And yet, there are not three eternals, but one eternal. Just as there are not three uncreated, or three infinites, but one uncreated and one infinite. In the same way, the Father is almighty, the Son almighty, the Holy Spirit almighty. And yet, there are not three almighties, but one almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. And yet there are not three gods, but one God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, and the Holy Spirit is Lord. And yet there are not three lords, but one Lord. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so also are we prohibited by the Catholic religion to say that there are three gods or lords. The Father is not made, nor created, nor begotten by anyone. The Son is neither made, nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is of the Father and of the Son, neither made, nor created, nor begotten, but proceeding. Thus there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in this Trinity, none is before or after another, none is greater or less than another. But the whole three persons are co-eternal with each other, and co-equal, so that in all things, as has been stated above, the Trinity in unity and unity in Trinity is to be worshipped. Therefore, whoever desires to be saved must think thus about the Trinity. But it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is the right faith that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ the Son of God is at the same time both God and man. He is God, begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages. He is man, both from the substance of his mother in this age. Perfect God and perfect man, composed of a rational soul and human flesh, equal to the Father with respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity, 
Although he is a man, he is not two, but one Christ. One, however, not by the conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. One altogether, not by confusion of substance, but by unity of person. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one flesh, who cut our salvation, descended into hell, rose again the third day from the dead, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. At his coming all people will rise again with their bodies, and give an account concerning their own deeds. And those who have done good will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. This is the Catholic faith. Whoever does not believe it faithfully and firmly cannot be saved. And let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you and praise you for the opportunity once again to gather in your house, to give worship and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, on this Trinity Sunday. Gracious Lord, we thank that even in the midst of the world that we live in, that you continue to show yourself through the word that you have given to us, that by the power of your Holy Spirit we may see your Son And through the means that you've given to us also, Father, we know that you are the one who sent him and have also given us to him. Gracious Heavenly Father, be with us now as a congregation here in this place, that we may give you thanks and praise as we serve you and as we bring before you this morning these our prayers. Father, we ask that you will continue to be with Ken Hagen as he is now at Lakeland in rehabilitation. Watch over your servant and keep him in your care. Father, we ask that you will continue to be with Mike Pfeiffer as he continues his time also of recuperation. Be a blessing to him as only you can do. Father, we thank and praise you with Judy Wittenberg for successful surgery this past week and that you will now continue to strengthen her body that she may return to doing the things she enjoys doing as quickly as possible. Father, we also give you thanks and praise for the baptism yesterday afternoon of Brooks White. Gracious Father, we ask that you will be with the young son of Kelsey and Zach White, that you will be a blessing to this family now, keeping them in your care, watching over them and blessing them as only you can do for your people. Father, we also give you thanks and praise this day as we join together with the entire family, giving thanks and praise for Dwight and Melvina. Gracious Heavenly Father, you are truly a blessing to this couple as you've given to them 70 years. May they continue on as you give them time and life. Father, may they also be a blessing and an example to each and every other married couple in our congregation. For we know that there are good times and bad, for that is a promise to us from your word. And yet you are the one who watches over husband and wife, keeping them in your care. Father, we thank you and praise you and ask that you will continue now to be watching over us as your people. That as we go about the days that you give to us, we may proclaim the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, in the hearts and minds of those that you've given to us each day be it in our retirement, in our work, in our school, and even in the time of vacation, that we may proclaim the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, bless our government, be with our President of the Congress, be watching over our Governor of State, its legislature, the Mayor of our village, and its board. Father, as always, continue to be with those who serve us in the military, watch over them in all the different branches, and yet, Father, we know that even in the midst of peace there is times of trouble, And we ask that you will be with the families of loved ones who have died this past week, that you will keep them in your care, be a blessing to them as only you can do. And if they do not know your son, Jesus Christ, may someone proclaim his name to them. Father, we also pray for those families who have lost loved ones this past week in senseless violence once again. Gracious Lord, we know that things are going to continue to get worse in our days, and yet we know that one day you are going to return and gather all those before you who proclaim the name of your Son, and we will be with you forever. As always, we pray, come, Lord Jesus. Gracious Father, be with our church body, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Bless our our synodical president, our district president, our circuit visitor, all the congregations that serve you. Father, we ask that you will also continue to allow uh, all of our seminaries and our preschools and all the places of education to be a blessing to your holy name. 
Father, for all these things and the prayers upon our heart, we give you thanks and praise, knowing that you hear and that you answer. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Continuing now with our communion liturgy, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, who with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit are one God, one Lord, in the confession of the only true God, we worship the Trinity in person and the unity and substance of majesty co-equal. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us through your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and His kingdom, which has no end. <laughs> Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which His betrayed took bread, when He had given thanks, He broke, and He gave it to His disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and he had supped when given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, and given us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension to heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Holy Christ, what great is the name of the Lord. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord be with you.
sing our post-communion canticle, Thank the Lord. God that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift and we implore you your mercy would strengthen us the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another through Jesus Christ your son our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God now and forever receive now the blessings of our Lord the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you all his peace. And we join together in the singing of our closing hymn, hymn number 506.